Wow. Hello, can you see me over there? Wow. Hello, yeah. can you see me over Whoa. there? Hello, yeah. can you see me over Whoa. there? Wow, that was not good. I'm going to have to figure out my microphone problems. Okay. Hello, can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. Hello, can you hear me? There's an echo though, isn't there? I can't. There's an the echo. There's an the echo. Oh, okay, no problem. Is everybody hearing an echo? Is everybody hearing an echo? Yeah, I muted the tag. Is everybody hearing an echo? Yeah, I muted the tag. Is everybody hearing an echo? Yeah, I muted the tag. And don't forget to. All right, so I'm going to have trouble doing that. Let me see what the fix is. Hold on. Hold on. Hello, can you hear me now? Can you hear me? Oops, I have my speakers cut off. Can you hear me? Oops, I have my speakers. Ooh, that's not going to go well. That's not going to go well. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. Why is this not working? Why is this not working? Got to figure out the problem. Hmm. Tara, if you could, could you please cut off your uh, your um, your video to save bandwidth? Let's see. Why am I getting an echo? Got the sound cut off there. Y'all can hear me, right? Type in the chat bar if you can. Okay. All right. Uh, everyone who is on YouTube, can you hear me on YouTube? If you can hear me on YouTube, please let me know. YouTube. Yes, you can. Okay. Wow. All right. Hmm. All right. What's going to have to happen here is you're going to have to type in your questions on both both in both areas okay so the people who are in uh who are in microsoft teams you're going to have to type your questions in and the people who are in uh, uh youtube you're going to have to type your questions in does everybody understand how that's going to work go ahead and type in yes actually you know what if i want to turn my mics off Okay. Do you still hear me? On uh, Microsoft Teams, does everybody still hear me? Okay, fantastic. I'm going to go ahead and... It seems better quality. Okay, right. Cool. Well, this is a good experiment. Thank you very much, folks, for coming tonight. This is the uh, Psych150 review session. This is a test review and also a test. No, I cannot hear you talking, uh, Joy. Um, and that's going to be a bummer. I'm going to have to work through that problem. Uh, I'm not sure what's up. Am I breaking up? Kind of laggy on your end. 
Okay, hold on. I wonder why. Am I laggy on YouTube? Am I laggy on YouTube? No, not laggy on YouTube. It might be because I'm sharing a, it's fine on YouTube, but MSU teams. Okay, hold on. I'm gonna try one quick change, all right? Right now I happen to be sharing my screen. I'm gonna quit sharing my screen. Okay. Is Teams running any better now? Is Teams running any better now? You're gonna to have to type. Still in and out? Hmm. Ah, <sighs> crap. A little bit. Hmm. I'm trying to figure this out. What do y'all think? You know what? Why doesn't everybody bounce over to YouTube? If you would, everybody just bounce over to YouTube. And I am, it is going to be recorded for YouTube, okay? Definitely going to be recorded for YouTube. Everybody come to YouTube. All right, fantastic. I am so sorry. I am so sorry tonight. YouTube squad's back. I know everybody doesn't love YouTube. Uh, I appreciate you coming. Uh, I'm not sure. Maybe next time I'll just try to do nothing but teams and see if that works better. Okay, so do we have everybody on YouTube? You know, I do like YouTube. It does seem to be the goat, Leanne. I'd have to agree with that. All right, Haley Strong, if you are in uh, Microsoft Teams, please migrate over to YouTube. Please migrate over to YouTube. Okay. Please migrate over to YouTube. Yes, uh, it's you should be able to find it as an announcement in your class, Callista. I sent it in an email link, and if you can't find it there, just go to Blackboard, and it's linked on your announcements page. So everybody, please migrate on over. Fantastic. Okay, well, let's go ahead and get started if we can. Let's go ahead and get started. I am going to hold uh, another review Sunday night. Uh, I am recording this review right now. Of course, you see we are six minutes into it and I still haven't started. So if you do come back to look at this review, just remember you're going to have to dig six minutes in. Um, I'll record the one on uh, Sunday night. Uh, maybe I'll try to do just, uh, just Microsoft Teams and it works better. Uh, I'm not sure if maybe my internet connection is the limiting factor tonight, but I do, do apologize for that, okay? Let's go ahead and get started. So the exam is going to be 60 questions uh, instead of 50. I said 50, but when I started uh, making the exam, I realized I needed a few more questions to help you out. Uh, no, it's going to be the exact same lecture. I'm, I've got a PowerPoint presentation. Oh, by the way, I am going to be going through a PowerPoint presentation, which is uh, taken from the slides that we looked at uh, over the course of this semester. I've taken selected slides out that I think represent the majority of the exam. I'm not saying these slides are the only thing you need to study, but the main ideas are in here. Probably 80 to 85% of the questions will be covered in these slides that I look at, okay? It will be timed. Uh, I know I've decided to give you 90 minutes. Uh, that's probably too long. Um, but I'm going to give you 90 minutes and see how it goes on the first exam. Uh, uh, but I wanted to have at least 15 questions per, ch per chapter to give you a good chance to demonstrate your knowledge for that chapter, okay? Now you have 90 minutes, Joy. 90 minutes. Qu qu ah, quit trying to get me, Joy. 
Uh, yeah, I'd give you time to think about questions. I hear you, Joy. Mm -hmm. Tell me that story again. Okay, so um, on the exam, you're going to have 15 questions uh, per chapter, okay? So as you study, think about what you would do if you had to uh, try to test somebody's knowledge in 15 questions. You wouldn't get too picky. You would try to be sort of general, okay? Now, um, if you remember, we did talk about psychoanalysis, behaviorism, um, the early schools of thought, right? The psychology schools of thought. Uh, I've got a couple of questions about uh, behaviorism and psychoanalysis, okay? So you're going to have to be able to differentiate between these early schools of thought. Remember, these are the schools that came up before psychology got professionalized after World War II and before it had official, uh, official um, uh, subfields. Here's the chart. You might want to take a look at this chart. You might want to take a look at this chart to help you, okay? Um, it looks like I goofed up here on the uh, PowerPoint presentation. Actually, if uh, this, this was supposed to be the uh, subfields of psychology. Do you remember when we talked about the subfields of psychology? And I will switch this and upload back to uh, Wake Tech. Do you remember we talked about the subfields, clinical psychology, behave, uh, clinical psychology, cognitive psychology, developmental psychology. Okay, I've got, I think, three or four questions from that chart. From that one chart is going to be on your exam. So make sure you can recognize examples of people doing those jobs. What does a developmental psychologist look like? What is an industrial organizational psychologist? Um, I, off the top of my head, uh, Joy is interested in understanding how children acquire language uh, during the first year of life. Uh, what subfield of psychology does joy come from? Okay, uh, this and that's the subfield. So uh, an example of a question for the uh, early perspectives might be um, this early perspective emphasized the role that the environment played on shaping our behavior. Uh, its main supporter, B.F. Skinner, did lots of experiments with animals. Does that help you out a little bit, Joy? Now, I've got a couple of questions that test your knowledge about the difference between correlations and experiments. Remember, correlations can show relationships, but it's harder for them to demonstrate causality. And in order to demonstrate causality, we need an experiment. Um, hey, nice try, Nicole. Um, you need to know what an independent versus a dependent variable is, and you need to know what random assignment is and why random assignment allows us to say that A causes B. Cool. I'm glad you're liking it, Haley. Pretty good online review, don't you think? So that's chapter one. So quick review of chapter one. There will be uh, uh, a couple of questions on the early schools of thought. There'll probably be four or five questions on uh, the subfields. And there'll be probably five or six questions on experiments and random assignment. So how does that grab you? Does everybody... So that's the 15 questions for chapter one. Okay, I'm assuming the answer is yes, so I'm going to move on. For chapter two, remember I want you to know the structures that are in the central nervous system. That's the brain and the spinal column. The brain controls, you said experiments, and random assignment. Why random assignment allows us to demonstrate cause. Okay, and then I've got a couple of questions on experiments, probably a couple of questions on correlations. You know what? I may even have a question on survey methodology. Um, you know what a survey is or an observational study. I don't remember exactly. All right, chapter two. Uh, I definitely want you to know the difference between the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. Remember, the central per nervous system is your brain and your spinal cord. That's the part that controls your body. The brain controls voluntary behavior and our internal organs. 
right? And our spinal column controls reflex behaviors. Do you remember in chapter four, we talked about infant reflexes? Infant reflexes are controlled by the spine, but when the spine myelinates, those infant reflexes go away. Now, the reflexes that last a lifetime are still going to be controlled by the spinal cord. Okay, uh, I am going to want you to know the anatomy of a neuron. I'm going to ask you about the dendrites, the cell bodies, and the direction, uh, and what an action, uh, what an axon is. I am not going to have pictures because the hot spots, you students, uh, that causes me trouble because students click sloppily. Um, and they get close enough that they want to ask me for credit, and so I have to go back and look at exams. So there will be no pictures on this exam. Instead, you will have to know the function. Uh, uh, <laughs> I might have lied. I, I didn't say I wouldn't lie, Joy. Come on now. I'm a psychologist, a head shrinker. I might have been screwing with your head, right? <laughs> okay. So, uh, I will ask you to know the anatomy of the neuron. Now, you'll notice I only have, uh, on the PowerPoint presentation that I send you, I only put this one uh, picture of a neuron. There are actually five of them, and each of them is going to have a description. So, this is the uh, slide that describes the dendrites. There's a slide that describes what the cell body does. There's a slide that describes what the axon does. There's a slide that describes what the terminal buttons do. I want you to look at all of those slides and know what those parts of the neurons do. Yes, I think the exam is going to be difficult, Dania. I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, uh, seriously, uh, put your seatbelt on, wear your crash helmet. The hardest thing ever. I don't know if it's the hardest thing ever, but it's certainly, hopefully, not going to be easy. I know I've got to stretch your abilities, Dania. If I gave you something that was too easy, you wouldn't stretch. Part of growth is pain. And so I'm here to bring the pain on you this weekend. Ha ha ha. Yes, you do, Etta. Where do we find the PowerPoint? The PowerPoint uh, is located on the announcements page of Blackboard, right there where I sent the link for the, uh, for the meeting tonight. Right underneath it is the PowerPoint presentation. Okay. Okay, right. There you go. Got to lay those neural pathways. There you go. Tara applying some of the knowledge here. Uh, I probably, I think I have two or three uh, questions on neurotransmitters. Typically what I do is I give you the neurotransmitter and ask you to tell me what it controls or I give you the behavioral control and I ask you to give me the neurotransmitter. So for example, I might say uh, um, uh, Nora is a very anxious person. She probably doesn't have enough of this neurotransmitter. And Joy Ratzman, you would say you're wheezing. Leanne's wheezing. No, no, no. This is multiple choice. This is all multiple choice. It's multiple choice, some matching, uh, and a couple of true falses. Okay. Um, the questions will be comparable to the homework questions because they were written by the same human being. That's the only thing I can tell you. You know what I mean? Typically, what you're going to find is teachers are pretty thematic in the way they write questions. So, uh, life hack for students. Figure out what your teacher likes on the first exam and then study that on the second exam. Some teachers like pictures. Some teachers like graphs. Some teachers like the definitions. Find out what your teacher likes and then study that on the second exam because te teachers typically don't change. Ooh, that's too much light. It's not enough light. Okay, graphs. There you go. Okay, so know those neurotransmitters. Uh, you know what? A big one, serotonin is one that usually finds its way onto my exam. S dopamine finds its way onto my exam. And GABA usually finds its way onto my exams. At least those three. I love to play games. Absolutely. Okay, and then I think I have one general question about the difference between uh, hormones and neurotransmitters. Especially Kahoot. I discovered Kahoot last spring, and uh, 
I'm a competitive kind of person, so I always like to uh, to compete. I know some of you out there in YouTube land are just like me and just as competitive as me, uh, and so you like it too. Oh, uh, I'm going to leave. Let's see. Get out of here. Okay. Okay, we got 40 watching now. Good crowd. Good crowd. Wiggins. <laughs> <laughs> you better run faster. I'm telling you, uh, WeeWa is good. WeeWa is good. Uh, I think there's a general connectivity. There's a question maybe about uh, modularity and connectivity. I told you that's kind of the way to think about the brain. A bunch of modules connected by neurotransmitters. I mean, by uh, neural pathways, myelinated axons, if you will. I love baseball. Yes, exams one, chapters one, two, three, and four are going to be on the exam. Okay, uh, here you go. And then brain parts. Uh, you see the four brain parts in here. What I'm going to do is say this part of your brain is responsible for sleep and arousal. And you'll say, Chris, that's the pons. I'll say, you know what? If you do a drug that stops your heart from beating, it probably affected this part of your brain stem. And you'll say, oh, that's the medulla, Chris. Or I'll say, you know what? If you have trouble with balance and motor coordination, you probably have damage to this brain structure. And you'll tell me uh, which brain structure. Do you see how that's going to play, folks? And I want you to know that for the hind brain structures, there's four of them. Then there's four subcortical forebrain structures. That's eight. And then I want you to know the... Uh, four frontal cortexes and the fusiform uh, and Broca's area. So seriously, you have to learn about 13, uh, thir thank you, Nancy, you have to learn about 13 or 14 areas of the brain. Absolutely. In fact, I'll even put a picture up if Weewa wants to come forward and step there and, and claim their prize publicly. Uh, I'll ask him, but yeah, I, I hope so. Um, so you have to learn 14, uh, these 12 to 14 areas of the brain. It seems like a lot, I know. Uh, when we get to chapter seven, I'll show you how to memorize things. After you've already done poorly on the first exam, I'll show you how to study for an exam. Uh, isn't that fun? Um, uh, but you know what? That's a good question, Leanne. Maybe I will reve reveal the aliases at the end. Okay. Ones for the cerebral cortex that we need to know again. Yes, you need to know the frontal lobe. Prefrontal cortex is responsible for planning and personality. That's what was destroyed in Phineas Gage. The Broca's area in the frontal cortex is for language production. Damage to that and you'll have trouble forming words. Located in your frontal lobe is a third structure called the motor cortex, and it controls the body parts. The right motor cortex controls the body parts on the left. The left motor cortex controls the body parts on the right. So those are the three structures in the frontal lobe. Uh, <laughs> no, you don't, Joy. I don't want to hear it. Those are the three structures in the frontal lobe. Then in the temporal lobe, I want you to know that it's responsible for memory. Memory, memory, memory. And think of the temporal lobe. It's right here by your ear. When you hear gossip and you remember it, it goes right in your ear to your temporal lobe. And remember, you also have an auditory cortex that processes sound in your temporal lobe. So the, the, uh, the uh, rumors go in your ear, processed by your auditory cortex in your temporal lobe, and then stored as memories in your temporal lobe. And then I do want you to know that the fusiform gyrus is in the temporal lobe, and that's what allows you to recognize faces so easily. So you know what's going to happen? You're going to, uh, you're going to, uh, is April Holder in here or is she in YouTube? I, I'm getting a message from her. Oh, please be in here. She's probably looking for us. Where is everybody? Crap, hold on a minute. If y'all, I hate to leave anybody out. April, are you here? Tommy, can you hear me? Y'all are too young for that. None of y'all know that. She's having troubles. Crap. Oh, somebody will have to go get her. We'll just have to leave her hang this time. There's always the, uh, Monday, the Sunday night review session. 
Okay, uh, it looks like a lot of people are replying in Teams, and I promise you I am not looking at Teams. Actually, I can look at Teams. Hold on. Let's see. Teams, where's the description? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Is it possible to review our old homework assignments? Yes, if you click on your old homework assignment grade in the grade book, it should open up your homework assignment, okay? Did you get that, April? Hopefully, April got that. Hopefully, April got that. Oh, April's trying to get in the meeting, isn't she? Hello, April. Oh, crap. Never mind. I can't get you. Okay, you took notes for all the points. Joy is helping April. Okay, cool. So let's move on. So, and then I want you to know the parietal lobe. Typically, that's where we have the sensory cortex, and that's uh, your sense of spatial orientation. And then occipital lobe is for vision. Occipital lobe is for vision. And so I might say damage to this part of your brain uh, can cause uh, vision problems. And you'll say, oh, Chris, that's the occipital lobe. I might say uh, Phineas Gage had this part of his uh, brain destroyed and it uh, changed his personality. You'll say, Chris, that's the prefrontal cortex. So do you folks see, uh, do you see how, uh, I'm not sure, Joy, that why she can't hear me. I'm not in Microsoft Teams anymore because actually, you know, I can be. Wait a minute. I just realized what I can do. Okay, hold on. Okay, so now she can hear me. Now she can definitely hear me. Okay, so let's see. The occipital lobe. Uh, so you'll have to know that. Um, chapter three. We're now on chapter three. I think I have one question about the global workspace model, just a general question. Um, I have a couple questions about split brain patients. Okay, remember the right half of your brain is nonverbal, the left half of your brain is verbal. So in people with split brains, their two sides of their brain don't communicate. So if you show somebody a picture on the left side of their uh, uh, body in their left hemifield, it goes to their right brain, which can't tell you what it sees. So they can't name the object. On the other hand, but if you ask them to point to a related object, that's a behavior they would be able to do it. Their brain just can't talk. It knows what it sees, it just can't talk. In order to talk, it has to send that picture over to the other side, okay? Uh, one question on the global workspace model, just a general question about what it is probably. A couple of questions on split brain patients, okay? And then I have some questions on altered states of consciousness. Uh, I think I have one or two questions on uh, hypnosis, and I have one or two questions on uh, flow. Uh, so they can't verbalize, but they point. Exactly. Ex exactly. The split brain patient's brain knows what it sees, but it can't get it out because it has to process it through Broca's area and Wernicke's area, which are located in the left side of the brain. So it knows what it's seeing. It just can't say it, which is kind of crazy in my opinion. It doesn't change the side that is processed. What exactly do you mean? That's an interesting question. It doesn't change the side. Okay. It doesn't change the side that it is processed. I'm going to let you uh, elaborate on that question because I'm not sure exactly what you're asking, Joy. And as you say that, the right eye is processed by the left brain. No, no, that's even more bizarre when we get to vision. No, uh, the right eye is processed by both, what the right eye sees is processed by both the right side of the brain and the left side of the brain. And what the left eye see is processed by the left side of the brain and the right side of the brain. So each eyeball sees half of, a, half of the visual pattern. So I've got my one eye closed. 
and your right field of vision, then you will say, if you see some of your right field of vision, then you will be able to say it's because the left is verbal. Exactly. Exactly. Now, you know what? I shouldn't say that because it's going to... Right. So your left eye, so if each eye process sends information to the left side of the brain and the right side of the brain. And the structure where that happens is what we're going to talk about next week, and that's called the optic chiasm. I'm sure you've heard that term before, folks. But that's where the two eyes send their information to the appropriate lobes. It just switches over right there. Okay, now I'm going to say something, and it's not on the exam, so don't think deeply. But here's the crazy thing. Brains don't always organize exactly the right way. Sometimes they organize differently. So what you're going to find is that in 10% of right-handed people, they're actually going to process language on the other side of the brain. That language ability is going to accidentally, through development, grow to the wrong side of their brain. So there are some right-handed people, not many, some people who uh, it's which side of the brain is dominant in function, which usually takes over. There's, there's a sort of complementarity of action, and one side will tend to take the dominant role in it. So here's the crazy thing. For left-handed people, 50% of them actually have Broca's area in the right side of their brain instead of the left side of their brain. And since the right half of the brain is not verbal, I mean, the left half of the brain is verbal. Let me see. Left-handed people are more likely to have language and reading disorders because of this contralateral design of the brain. I know my mind is officially blown and I'm trying to teach it, right? Okay, so I do want you to know a little bit about flow. You know, that feeling when you really, really get into something. Um, and I want you to know that there are certain personality types that uh, desire stimulation, that are intrinsically motivated, that find flow more easily than others. <laughs> well, thank you, Leanne, for the 10,000th time. Okay, uh, then in chapter three, I'm definitely going to want you to know that the suprachiasmatic nucleus gives you a 24-hour cycle. Uh, if you destroy it, your brain's 24-hour cycle completely goes away. It's not that it just unties from the sun. It goes completely away, and you have the sleeping pattern similar to a baby, if you will. Sleeping night, day, whenever you want. Just having no periodicity about your sleep. If your brain becomes disconnected, if your suprachiasmatic nucleus becomes disconnected from, your, from light via the, the optic pathway, then you might experience uh, a shift of your cycle away from the, 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 uh, away from the sun. And that's why people who are blind are more likely to have sleep disorders because a lot of times that pathway is damaged. Okay, um, I want you to know a definition, circadian rhythm. There is a question, just a definitional question. You better know what the circadian rhythm is. I want you to know uh, what biological processes change based on the time of the day. And I do want you to know that the pineal gland produces melatonin uh, and that that affects the sleep cycle. I remember those three questions. Okay. I am going to ask you questions about the different sleep cycles. Remember, uh, delta waves occur when you are in deep sleep. Sleep spindles occur when you are in light sleep. And brains generate different activi electrical activity based upon whether you're awake or what type of sleep you are in. Okay? Uh, you know what? I do want you to know that we cycle back and forth uh, between REM and non-REM sleep about five times a night. Um, doo -doo 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 uh, and we do most of our dreaming during REM sleep. Uh, if you're prevented from getting REM sleep, your body will demand it, right? Uh, and that's called REM rebound. Let's see. And we get most of our delta sleep early in the night. So I might have some general sleep questions. And I do have, let me see, 
One, two, I think I have three questions on sleep disorders. So know your sleep disorders, okay? Any questions so far? Is everybody bored yet? Are you folks still following along? I haven't had a, a comment or a question in a couple of minutes, so I'm afraid that you're falling asleep on me. I can sing and dance if you want. Not bored. Okay, good enough. Follow along then. Keep up. Okay. I have this all my this, ah, <laughs> Good. Well, I'm glad you're focused. That's the goal of my of my class to get you focused, man. Oh, please do. Yeah. It's going to cost you some cash first, in the, I mean, uh, Joy. There you go. I like your I like your wine habit there, Nicole. She always relaxes. She comes to class with a different kind of wine every week. Uh, and we all chat, chat her up and try to find out what her favorite flavor is. Cool. You are confused with REM disorders and sleepwalking. Okay, sleepwalking and sleep talking are more common, are completely common uh, in early childhood. And they are non REM events. They occur in deep sleep, okay? It's kind of bizarre because you think you would walk and talk because of a dream, but you don't. You sleepwalk and you sleep talk during deep, deep, deep sleep. Okay, let me go back. So, oh, there we go, right here. Do you see uh, this? Down in the gray areas, that's when you do your sleepwalking and sleep talking. Okay, do you see the little green caps at the top where it's REM sleep? That's when you have your nightmares and your REM behavioral disorder. <laughs> Elora with their Homer Simpson mug, nice, very classy. Okay, does that make sense? Let's move on to chapter four. Uh, I do want you to be able to put the, the uh, prenatal development periods in order. I want you to know uh, what happens in each of these ages, each of these periods. So in the germinal period, the zygote implants in the uterine wall and the embryonic period, organogenesis occurs when all the organs of the, of the baby uh, 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 develop. And then in the fetal period, which is when most of the weight gain occurs. I want you to know, uh, I, I know there is a question asking uh, what determines the impact of a teratogen um, on, on, a, uh, on, a, uh, on a baby. So I do have that question. But my little brother is left-handed and he has a speech. Wow, that's interesting, Nancy. Confirming evidence. Uh, I do want you to know uh, how long it takes the nervous system to develop. Does anybody know how long does it take the nervous system to fully to develop? Anybody going to answer that question? How long does it take the nervous system? 25 years. Gold star for you, Joy Ratsman. Haley Strong, silver star for you because you weren't quite as quick as Joy. Tara, you're bronze. <laughs> okay, good enough. And the rest of you get wooden medals. Okay, um, I do want you to know uh, myelination and dendritic spreading are the two thing, two ways in which our nervous systems change and develop. Remember, I want you to know that dendritic spreading, the spreading of synaptic connections, is based upon experience and stimulation. That's what we would call learning. And I do want you to know that uh, myelination is genetically programmed and is not affected by learning. Okay? Well, sh <laughs> <coughs> <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I actually had to approve that comment, Haley, and this is a not-for-prime-time broadcast, so you can go ahead and say that in my class. Okay, um, we do know about milestones. Remember, why are doctors interested in milestones? Uh, a, a platinum for you, Haley. Platinum, how about that? 
So remember, doctors are interested in milestones because they help us tell if the child's nervous system is developing properly. Remember, milestones are nothing but behaviors that we expect to occur at predictable times. Um, I think I have a question uh, that differentiates between a gross motor behavior and a fine motor behavior. Jumping up and down is using my legs. That's a gross motor behavior because it uses big muscles. But pinching my little fingers together is a fine motor behavior because I'm using small, small muscles. Okay, um, I want you to know that we have these different categories of milestones. And I think there's a question asking when uh, we walk or talk. I forget which one. It's an awkward, I'm not sure if it's walk or talk, but both of them are going to be right around 12 months. And I think I had a throwaway question about when children learn to walk or talk. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, <laughs> Uh, attachment. Um, I do want you to know that uh, Harry Harlow found that monkeys uh, like their monkeys, like babies, like their moms, not because their moms feed them, but because they provide them warmth and comfort. Which of the neck? I would say that feels pretty gross to me. How about gross? Because it's in the spine, the trunk. Now, on the other hand, the lips, that would be a fine motor skill, right? Holy cow, that just came across on my screen here. That was a gross thing to look at. I'm sorry, folks. Hopefully that implants that memory in your mind forever. <laughs> Okay, remember Harry Harlow's monkeys and the fact that why children and moms, uh, children bond to their parents, not because their parents feed them, which is, would be a behavioral explanation, but because their parents provide creature comfort and warmth. Okay, uh, attachment styles. Um, I think there's a question on stranger anxiety or separation anxiety. I give you a description of a situation and you have to tell me which one it is. Um, and I want you to know that in the strange situation experiment, the important part wasn't when the mom left the baby, it's when the mom came back. They wanted to see the reunion or the reattachment. That's the key. Everybody can be separated, but are you able to form that bond back when the parent comes back in the room? Okay. And then I want you, I think there is a question um, that describes a kid's attachment style. And you have to tell me if they are secure, avoidant, or ambivalent. <laughs> oh, thank you. Uh, separation protest is the, separation anxiety is the feeling. Separation protest is the behavior, Joy. So the kid gets uptight, so the kid cries. The kid getting uptight is separation anxiety. The kid crying is separation protest. Okay, Jean Piaget. Um, I remember, I think I had a couple of just general questions. Um, know what the broad uh, uh, abilities of the human mind as it evolves through these four stages are. So remember, children before the age of two, Piaget thought were pre-symbolic. So they live in their sensory experiences in their motor, uh, motor, uh, what did I just say? What did I just say? Piaget. Oh, yes, Piaget. Uh, he is Swiss. You know, crazy thing, Piaget published his first scientific article at the age of 15. 15. What were you doing at 15? Were you publishing scientific articles? I don't think so, right? He published half a dozen articles in his high school years on mollusks. He was a mollusk expert at 17 years of age. And actually, they wanted him to be the curator of the mollusk uh, collection in his hometown museum of Neuchâtel, Switzerland. But he said no because he had to finish high school. You published a poem. See, and you're still better than me, uh, Elora. I know, Joy. This guy's freaking publishing articles at 15. I think I got my first one at 30. 
you know, and I don't, even, I don't even think I was the first author on it. Yeah, some people are just talented that way. Okay, so sensory motor period, uh, I want you to know that uh, I, I there may be a question t uh, demonstrating object permanence. So little Chucky, when you hide uh, the toy under the blanket, Chucky forgets that it's there. What does this demonstrate? And I want you to say object permanence, okay? Uh, um, so, pre-operational period. Remember, you're symbolic but not logical. Kids can't do conservation tasks, which are those logical tasks that Piaget designed uh, during this stage. And this is why we believe in silly things like the Easter Bunny and, uh, and, and Santa Claus. Remember, uh, middle school, your teachers give you lots of examples and pictures and models and stuff because you are logical but concrete. And then remember, hypothetical deductive reasoning is when you can figure out uh, something is a bad idea before you do it. That's abstract thinking. Oh, no, you got mixed up with them on the neuromatrix. <laughs> cool. Well, I'm glad everybody's liking this class. You know what? I'm having a great time this semester, too. I think it's way more fun to, uh, to interact in a class than just to post stuff on Blackboard and have students do it. I can't tell you uh, how boring grading and evaluating and all that crap is. Uh, it's more fun talking and having fun. I love it. Sweet. Cool. So uh, do you remember we have schemes? I think I have at least one question on either assimilation or accommodation. Remember, a scheme is a mental representation. It's a mental representation that helps you organize the world. Um, and we change these schemes. We either see where they fit, which is called assimilation, or we see how we have to change these schemas based on new information, which is accommodation. And in lecture, I told you the story about my little kid uh, when he first learned what a dog was. We went to all, all the neighbors' houses, and he kept pointing and saying doggy, and he was always right. And he found out that doggies can be big, not just small like our dogs. Doggies can be hairy, not uh, hairless like our dog. Doggies can be all kinds of different shapes. And so he assimilated the schema doggy in a bunch of different places. But then we took him and he met the uh, cat and he said, doggoo, and we said, no, that's a cat. So he had to change his scheme of what he thought a dog was. And each and every one of us, every day, we are adjusting our schemes based on new information. We're either assimilating them. Hey, I can do this same study trick in this class, and this same study trick in this class, and this same study trick works in all different classes. And then I get to biology, and I find out, uh-oh, this study trick needs to change to work here. So I assimilated it into a bunch of different classes, and then I accommodated when I knew I needed to change it. Dagoos. Dagoo. I know, it was so funny. He could have said, Mom. He could have said, Dad. I'm sitting there waiting. I wanted him to say, Dad, so bad. You know what I mean? I love my wife, but I was like, hey, I want him to say, Dad. Frick, no. The first thing he does is say, Dagoo. I know, right? Okay, Piaget and tasks. Um, there's the object, uh, object permanence. I honestly don't think I have a question on conservation. Uh, on the exam. I do not think I have uh, on conservation. And then you remember we talked about Eric Erickson. I said uh, first son or se first son, my oldest, my oldest. Yeah, my second son. <laughs> you know what? I hate to say this. Your first kid, you remember everything they do, everything they think, everything they feel. You count all their words. But by the time the second or third son comes around, you know, you're like been there, done that, and you don't pay as much attention. So I forget what my second son's word was. Oops. Bad dad. <laughs> I'm sw I swear to God it happens. I'm surprised uh, if you have four or five kids, you can even remember the, the last one's name. I'll be quite honest with you, man. He says, bye-bye and mama. I'm naughty. You're with him. Right. Isn't that the truth, Haley? Usually those nannies do spend more time. Hey, wait, Edda, aren't you a nana? Uh, aren't you a nanny as well? Or was that just you, Haley? 
second son of the apocalypse. Yeah, my second son is actually an ass kicker. He's a uh, he, he he my my first son's good, but my second son's a, a crazy nut job boy. He's a hard working guy. He's gonna be rich and wealthy. Any of you eighteen year old girls out there, he's gonna be rich. Okay. Yeah, oh you were at a, that's the key. Okay. So uh remember Eric Erickson was an ego psychologist. He said we're forming our identity throughout our whole life. And so you'll notice that we have he says that we go through these different stages where we have to resolve a crisis or basically answer a question about ourselves. On the exam, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you description of people kind of like the uh, successful revolution, resolution of crisis. If you look at that column right there, I'm going to use examples and you're going to have to tell me what stage they're in. So if I said uh, most teenage kids are trying to figure out who they are, uh, you'll what psychosocial crisis are they having? And you'll say, oh, that's identity versus role confusion. If I tell you I'm 50 years old and I'm trying to figure out if I can leave something for the next generation, uh, what crisis am I at? You're going to say, oh, Dr. Roddenberry, you're in the generativity versus stagnant crisis. Oh, that's sweet. Oh, so... Oh, your kid stayed in Chicago. How long did you stay in the Windy City? See, I told you, Joy. See, see listen, folks. See, 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 see. Joy is in the healthcare field, and I'm telling you, I'm not exactly sure why, but those people in the healthcare field love them some Erickson. So, if you're going to be in nursing school, you should go ahead and focus on learning this whole stinking chart in depth this semester and it'll save you a lot of trouble down the road just go ahead and put it in your mind because they love it in nursing school and i'm not speaking spanish but sometimes i do start to start to uh uh, uh stop talking ah damn straight it's damn straight okay all right so uh, let's see. Yep. So there we are back to the beginning. I am, I know, right? Joy, I just freaking lost all my thoughts. They went right out of my head. I'm staring here at the camera going, uh, you know, here's my close up. Uh, and I got stage fright. All right. So that's all I had to say. Do you have any questions? Did this help? Did this help you folks at all this week, tonight, excuse me, this week? Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm still a couple of years from being a YouTube star. I'm still polishing the chops. You know what I'm saying? Helps focus. Yeah. Oh, Janera. Good to see you. You haven't, I haven't seen you type uh, tonight. It's good to see you, Janera. Gerald, Gerald, good to see you. You were kind of quiet tonight too. Anastasia, good to see you. Fantastic. Well, I tell you what, we've been at this for 50 minutes. Um, Hey, did you find this as a good, was this a good way to do a review session? Because I think I'm going to maybe, maybe I should do this instead of, uh, instead of Microsoft Teams. What'd y'all think? Would you prefer that we do this or go back to Microsoft Teams? Since you've already done one. You like this one? Okay. YouTube. I like YouTube because it's just easier to get on to. You know what I mean? You don't have freaking bandwidth problems. It just works so much easier. Okay, good enough. Then I'm going to make, I'm going to cancel the, uh, the uh, Microsoft Teams and make everybody come to the YouTube. And since we're going to be doing it on YouTube, size is not going, uh, crowd is not going to be a problem. If you want to come back and do this review again Sunday night before you take the exam on, on Monday, you are more than welcome to. Oh, Camille misses vocal interaction. Doggone it. Can you call me Hot Rod? Yes, you can. Actually, you should call me. Yes, you can call me Hot Rod. My buddies call me Sea Rod. Hot cop. <laughs> Will I be no? No, I will not be posting this PowerPoint, Bernice, because I already posted it, Bernice. Ha! How about that? It's easier to ask questions. Okay. 
I can't with some of these comments. Okay. Cool. Um, well, you know what? I'll figure the technology out so that I can do both next time. Because um, I, I understand you like the vocal uh, interaction. So I'll figure something out, okay? All right, folks. It's there, man. I think it's there. It should be there. I uploaded it, I swear to God. Go back and look at that announcements, all right? David Dobrik. I'll check him out. Structural, no, you do not need to know the psychologists associated with structural functionalism and all of those. The only ones I want you to know are the ones with behaviorism and psychoanalysis. The collabs are fun, right? All right, folks. Look, take care. I'm off for the evening. Uh, your grades, your collaboration grades will be updated tomorrow night by 9 p.m. Have a great weekend. Good luck studying, and I look forward to seeing you soon, okay? Take care.